Let's begin with the positive aspects I encountered during the alpha test of Suicide Squad. Kill the Justice League. The game exhibits substantial potential, incorporating several Arkham elements that fans will appreciate. Elements such as Brainiac minions communicating through comms, the inclusion of riddles to solve, and TV transmissions scattered throughout the city add depth to the overall experience. One notable mission takes players to Batman's museum, featuring villains from previous Arkham games, including the infamous Arkham Knight, and culminating in a gripping first encounter with Batman himself. Navigating the game requires skillful maneuvers, emphasizing the importance of chaining boosts. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League follows the looter-shooter archetype, where players engage in battles to acquire new gear including weapons and outfits. Each character has a skill tree that allows you to choose new skills as you level up. The narrative kicks off similarly to the first Arkham game, with Waller assembling the Suicide Squad at Arkham to confront the Justice League. Solo play proves enjoyable for exploration, but the true essence of grinding for XP and loot is heightened when playing with friends or other players. Now, let's delve into my concerns, particularly pertaining to the PC version of the game. My primary apprehension revolves around the PC performance. Despite playing on a high-end system featuring a Ryzen 7, NVIDIA RTX 3070, 16 GB of RAM, and NVMe storage, I encountered frequent FPS drops. It is my sincere hope that Rocksteady addresses and optimizes these issues before the official release. Another concern revolves around the Battle Pass. While not present in the Alpha Test, I worry that essential content might be locked behind it. On a positive note, the promise of free DLCs is encouraging. Additionally, the absence of an offline mode at launch with Rocksteady assuring its addition post-release raises some reservations. In conclusion, my initial playthrough provided enjoyment, appreciating what the playtest had to offer. However, after approximately five hours, the gameplay began to feel somewhat repetitive. There is optimism that the full game will introduce more diverse activities through the storyline and, crucially, in the endgame. Thank you for tuning in.